There's so much they need to learn To save us from disasters There isn't one appliance That they don't know about But if you need a picture Please don't let their secret out But if you need a picture Please don't let their secret out But if you need a picture Please don't let their secret out The iron. All done. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Professor Eugenia! <clears throat> yes, Elisa? The award ceremony's in an hour. You need to leave soon. I remember, Elisa. What are you getting an award for? It's the... <laughs> it's the genius of the year. Not too modest, but fair. <laughs> and well-deserved. Wow. And they're giving it to you? Well, yeah. Will they show it on TV? <laughs> Why, of course. Class. And during your speech, can you say hi to me? And me, and me. And Zipka. Right. Say something like this. I'd like to send a big shout-out to all my Fixie friends. Oh, that's a great idea. That way, everyone can know about Fixies. Professor Eugenius, didn't I see an iron in here earlier? Hmm? Huh? Oh! Oh, come on, Elisa. There's no need for that. I'm not going to argue with you. You have to look just perfect. Otherwise, everybody is going to think that I don't take care of you. First, we'll let the iron warm up, and then I can iron your suit. The most essential part of an electric iron is called the heating coil. It's hidden inside the iron sole plate. When the iron is plugged into an electrical outlet, the coil gets hot and heats up the sole. People use a hot iron to remove the wrinkles from their clothing. Irons also have a water container. When the water gets hot, it turns into steam. The steam comes out through the holes in the iron sole, making it even easier to remove wrinkles. Wow, that sure is hot. All that's left to do is pour some water into it. Professor, this is water, right? Yeah, yeah, it's water. That isn't water. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's not water, it's not water. Then what is it? Well, it's, uh, juice. Juice? Yeah, juice. Oh, no, the poor iron won't last. Phew, and it smells like crud. I broke the iron, it's awful. No, 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 Elisa, don't be so upset. Don't be so upset. It's the genius of the year ceremony, and you'll be in a wrinkled suit in front of the whole country. Oh, I won't survive. <laughs> I... Elisa, hang in there. Be careful. Elisa. I... Elisa. Professor Eugenius, are you all right? Oh, couldn't be any better. We're going to go fix that iron for you. And while we're doing that, you go fix Elisa. That would be great. <gasps> Look over there. I'll fix the contact. You and Nola can scrape that burnt juice off the iron. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Elisa, Elisa, please wake up. Uh... We did it. Your iron is fixed. Elisa, you should see the iron. It's working. What? And I'm just lying around here? I have to hurry. Where's the iron and your suit? Wrinkled clothing is not very beautiful. And that's why, since ancient times, people have been trying to find different ways to get rid of wrinkles. For example, long ago, people would put their wrinkled clothing under a heavy, flat rock. In ancient Rome, people used to beat their crinkled garments with a metal hammer. And in China, fabric was ironed with hot frying pans. Irons with a shape like what is used today appeared during the Middle Ages. They were made out of cast iron and needed to be heated up on a stove before they could be used. Later, people came up with irons that were heated by putting hot coals inside. And finally, in the 19th century, a convenient electrical iron was invented and has been used ever since. And the prize for Genius of the Year goes to... Professor Eugenius! Bravo! Bravo, Professor! 
I thank you. I give my sincerest thanks to you. And may I take this opportunity to send my greetings to Fix? Uh... Brilliant! He is just astounding. Perfection from head to toe. <gasps> well, practically perfect. <laughs> hey, Simka, the button got stuck on the remote. How can we get it back out of there? Look and learn, Nolik. Please help! Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh, oh, oh! oh. Should I let it? And so what? I can turn it on without it. And my favorite cartoon is just about to start. Forget about the cartoons, will ya? Nolik is missing! I'm afraid Nolik hid inside of the remote. And Yusaka took it. Oh no, Nolik's in big time trouble. Tom Thomas, there must be something you can do! Chusaka, Chusaka, come here. Where is that dog hiding? I'm gonna go look in the other rooms. Simka! Tom Thomas! Here I am! I'm over here! <sighs> For now, I'll wait here. Chusaka's not out there. Where are you? Hey, Simka! I ran to get a pack a mat! What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna search for the infrared ray that comes out of the remote. That's so great! But what is it? I'll explain it to you. Inside of most remote controls, there's a special type of light bulb called a light-emitting diode, or LED for short. When we press a button, the LED sends an invisible infrared ray. And in the TV, there is a receiver for these invisible rays. The TV understands the command that comes from the remote control and carries it out, like changing the channel or the volume. If the rays are invisible, then how is it possible to see them? In the pack a mat I've got these special goggles that can help me. And now what? Yell to Nolik. Get him to close the contact on any one of the buttons. Nolik! You gotta push one of the buttons down on the remote! A button? But how am I gonna do that? Wait, one second! Chusaka Chusaka with a brain full of rush! Nothing for you here. But here's something. There he is. He's over there. Chusaka, come here. Do you want a hot dog? So you want to play tough. All right, then. out for the remote's race. It's just a shame it's impossible for me to see him. What are you saying? You can! If you want to see infrared rays, all you have to do is look through a digital camera. Try it for yourself. Turn on the camera on a mobile telephone. Now go ahead and press any button on the remote control and point the camera toward the front of it. You'll see a bright dot on the screen of the camera. That's the light emitting diode working. It's letting off a special light that can't be seen by the naked eye. It's also possible to point the remote control at a mirror. 
and then through the camera, you can see how the light-emitting diode turns itself on. So what that means is that invisible rays bounce off of a mirror in the same way that regular light does. So you can control the TV by bouncing the light from a remote control off of a mirror. You don't believe me? Then go ahead and try it yourself. By the way, if your toys weren't all stuffed under the bed, we would have found the remote without the goggles. Don't worry about it. When the cartoons are over, I'll put them away. So, you done watching? Time to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> All clear. Oh, take a look. A mobile phone. You think they bought Tom Thomas a new one? Oh, wow. Nolan, stop. Awesome. Uh, turn around. Oh. Tom Thomas, help us, please. We're trying to save your telephone. That's not mine. Oh. Katya left it behind. Katya! Katya! She's gone. It's too late. Oh, an SMS just came in. You won't read it, will you? Of course not. But what if it's something important? Tom Thomas, don't you even dare go and read her letters. Uh-huh, pretty interesting. Looky, there's just a ton of these messages. Now, Nolik. You go and distract him from the telephone. Uh-huh. Chisaka, hey! It's me, your buddy Nolik. Hey there. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! That's enough with the barking! Out of this room! Right now! Done! Well, power's off now! Huh, what's up? It stopped working all of a sudden. Oh, it looks like you've broken it. What? No way. You did too. Well, Tom Thomas, now you have to give Katya your phone back like this. I just don't get it. It happened because you were reading someone else's mail. It was just an SMS. An SMS is no different from a letter. It's only shorter. People send SMSs through their mobile phones. And that's why looking inside someone else's phone and reading their SMSs is just as rude as reading someone else's mail. And that's why when we fixies work inside of a phone, we always put our headphones on when a call comes in. So we won't overhear people's private conversations by accident. It's just the polite thing to do. I promise I won't read anyone else's messages. But that's not going to make the mobile work again. Now what? Tell them the truth? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry, Tom Thomas, because we turned the phone off. And now we'll turn it back on. See that? The contact's barely attached. We just need to write a note to the Fixies who work over at Katya's. I'm sure they'll fix it. There are fixies living in every home, and the work they have to do can seem endless. The TV starts acting up, then the doorbell breaks, the washing machine stops running, and then the phone won't ring. And besides all of that, there is cleaning and there's oiling. Like the appliances in the kitchen or kids' toys and all those other things. Modern houses are literally stuffed with all sorts of devices. And that is why the fixies keep working day in and day out. Unfortunately, this can make fixies get carried away by their jobs. And they can forget about their fixie relatives and close friends that live in the neighboring houses and apartments. And that's not right. 
Just like humans, Fixies have to remember to go and visit each other more often and write each other letters or at least send their regards. That's all. It's working again. You're the best. Now I can give a call to Katya and tell her she left her phone over here. To who? Katya. And her phone is where? <laughs> Tom Thomas, good catch. Boy, you're fast. Just like a, like a... Like a fixie. Once I finish you, my top secret growth potion, I will create my own giant canine crew. And then I'll rule the... Whoa! Wow, this is super. You're better than a TV show. Oh, yeah, it's fun, but it's going to end badly. <laughs> Tom Thomas, get ready for bed. I'm going, Dad. But first, my secret recipe. We start with a bit of Carboniterus. And now a little bit of bread and butteress. And finally, beard of fumarissa. Chusaka, don't be afraid. Drink, my baby. And you'll grow ten times your size. What? It doesn't taste good? Oh, right. I forgot it needed stirring. This hypersonic mixer will do the trick. Tom Thomas, you shouldn't use what doesn't belong to you. That's your father's toothbrush. Ah! Hey, cut it out! You're acting crazy! <laughs> are a big boy, but your brain is smaller than Nolix. Why, thank you. Just go put the toothbrush back in its place. I'm like you never touched it. Nah, that's not right at all. Tom Thomas, what's up? I'm almost done, Dad. Simka, Nolik, please, I really need your help. No panicking. First, we need to understand what could have broken inside of there. An electric toothbrush is really simple, as long as you know these three parts the battery, the motor, and a very clever mechanism that connects the motor with the bristles. The whole secret to the toothbrush is right in there. That mechanism uses the spinning of the motor to make the bristles move very fast back and forth, from left to right, from right to left. And that's how it brushes your teeth. So what can we do about it? Here's what we do. First, we take out the motor, then we take the gears out, and then the mechanism. How much time do we need to do that? One or two hours. What? No! Just listen here, Tom Thomas. You need to open up the battery compartment. Wait for me right here. These are your teeth. Well, I mean, they're not your teeth, but you get what I'm saying. Nowadays, we use a toothbrush to clean our teeth, but it wasn't always that way. The ancient Egyptians used a chewed stick to scrape their teeth, while the ancient Greeks rubbed their teeth with a rag. And the Vikings, well, who knows what they used? And then, only 200 years ago, an Englishman named William Addis came up with something better. He drilled holes into a meat bone, inserted bunches of bristles into them, and there you go, the toothbrush. And here's what I need to tell you all as a fixie, that is, as a master repairman. You need to make sure to brush your teeth often, especially after eating, or you'll be getting them repaired often at the dentist. Well, is something wrong with the mechanism? No, it's fine. Is the motor burned out? No. Then what's wrong with it? You're not gonna believe it. But the battery died. That's all? I know what to do. I'll put in new ones. Shh. Your dad 
Dad turned the toothbrush on. Looks like everything's fine. It's working. Ooh, way to go. Excellent. Your dad will never find out what kind of slop you mixed up with his brush. What slop? <laughs> How dare you, Nolik? How dare you refer to my mighty potion like this? Tom Thomas, somehow soap got all over my toothbrush. Can you explain that? Ay, ay, ay. Well, you got caught. What do you say now? <laughs> hey, Tom Thomas, what you thinking about? Huh? For school, I have to write an essay. My very best friend. I don't know. Who should I write about? What do you mean, who? Aren't I your closest friend? Of course. How could I forget to write about you? And you can keep forgetting. That's our secret, right? Don't you remember the promise you made when we met? <sighs> sure. How could I forget? What's wrong with Chusaka today? Chusaka, why are these screws bothering you so badly? <laughs> What's with you? Leave them alone already. Will you just calm down? You're gonna destroy my plane. Let's get out of here. Ow! What's going on? <gasps> What's going on? Hey, if you don't turn back again, I'm not letting you go. Oh, please, don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you, too. I'll just ask you one question and let you go. Nolik, we can't. Don't worry about it. Quit your staring. Ask your question, boy. No way you can talk. Just, just, just tell me, who are you? Fixies. That's all. We answered. Now you let us out. Oh, wait, but what's it mean that you're Fixies? That's already question number two. You promised to let us out, didn't you? I'm sorry. You can leave now. Zemka, it's fine. I can see from his look that we can trust him. Uh, all right. We'll tell him. You gotta swear that you don't tell anyone else. I swear it. Fixies. We're the little people that live inside of machines and appliances and take care of them. Fixing them, cleaning them, and oiling them. Humans never suspect us. They think that if something breaks and then suddenly starts working again, that it happened all by itself. Well, nothing happens by itself. It happens because we, the Fixies, are living inside. Yes, without the Fixies, humans would have so many more problems with their machines. That's awesome. And so what are your names? That's already question number three. You can call me Nolik, and her name is Simka. And my name's Tom Thomas. Will you come back over? Oh, well. Uh, I was this close to becoming the first kid in the whole world to make friends with the Fixies. I thought you guys would never come back over. And we didn't plan on coming back. But then we thought it'd be really great to be the only Fixies in the whole world who are friends with the only kid in the whole world who is friends with the Fixies. Ah! <gasps> and who has told no one about us. The Fixies do everything they can do to hide from humans. They are afraid that if humans discovered Fixies, they would hunt them down and capture them and start keeping them in cages just like pets. And worse than that, they would take them into their laboratories and start examining them under microscopes, even conducting scientific experiments on them. 
Or suppose that humans thought we'd do all their work for them, and so they decided that they didn't have to take care of their appliances any longer. Well then, let me tell you this. If humans decided that they didn't have to clean or fix their own appliances, then not even the Fixies will be able to stop them from breaking no matter what they do. That's why the Fixies are very smart to hide from humans. Okay then, I'll write about someone else. I have the very best friend ever. Period. When something's broken, he repairs it. He's the one and only No. The one and only Nolan. I can't believe the new thermometer isn't working. Tom Thomas, stay in bed. And I'll try and look for that old mercury thermometer. Hey, did you get sick? That's one way of saying it. I don't know how I'm gonna pass that math test today. You're not ready, so you don't want to go to school. Well, yeah. So if you pull a sickie, then you can trick your mom. No, that's not true. I'm just pretending a little bit. You think so? Well, you won't trick the thermometer. Simka, what's a mercury thermometer? <laughs> mercury is a type of liquid metal that's silver in color. There's no mercury inside of new thermometers. Now they're electronic. Old thermometers were made with a glass tube with markings and a bit of mercury inside them. When the end of the tube warms up, the mercury inside of it expands and creeps up the tube. And that's how those old thermometers measure temperature. The longer the column of mercury, the higher the person's temperature is. That means I need to warm up the end of the thermometer. Tom Thomas, you're a genius! But how will you warm it up? Finally, I found it. Well, let's see. Mom, can I eat something? <coughs> Hang in there, sweetie. I'll make you something. Ooh, that is hot. Now there's just no way it won't have a temperature. Hey, what are you doing in here? Well, how high did you get it? 108 is what it's showing. Oh, no. With the temperature that high, they'll send you straight to the hospital. And you don't need that. You'd better shake that thermometer. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That'll get the temperature down a little. Ah! Well, so much for that. Cheaters never prosper. Tom Thomas, did you see this? Nola, don't touch the mercury. It's poisonous. Stop it right now. And you, Tom Thomas, you don't touch that mercury either. It's dangerous. Then how can we throw it out? Call your mom and she can help you. I can't. How could I call her? Then she'd find out that I wanted to trick her. Maybe it's better to tell the truth. I can't. I can't do it. All right, then. It looks like there's no other choice. Nolik, call Papus and Masia. I'll get him. And you go back to your room and wait. Looks like this whole job is done. Not yet. We still need to neutralize this mercury. In everybody's home, there's all sorts of chemicals around. They are used for cleaning dishes, clothes, the bathroom, and dealing with pests. And all of these substances can be very harmful to human health. But some people don't seem to understand this. They might use a dangerous spray or a poisonous liquid and then forget to wash their hands afterward. And then they go and eat or rub their eyes with their hands. That can cause serious damage to their vision or stomachs. Ah. 
and never put anything into your mouth that looks like medicine, unless your parents or a doctor gave it to you. And if you ever happen to find something on the ground that looks like a piece of candy, you must never put it in your mouth. You can get poisoned that way. Oh, humans. If they'd only remember this simple advice, they'd stay safer. And what do we do with the glass that's broken? That job's not for fixies. Hmm. Tom Thomas, we cleaned up all the mercury. And the glass, too? No, not the broken glass. But will you? Pabu said that it's not our job. He told us you have to get your parents to come and help you. That part's your responsibility. Here's some food for you. What's the matter? Hmm? Mom, I... I broke the thermometer. Broke it? Did you cut yourself? No. The mercury, did you touch it? I didn't. Simka, you think you'll tell her the truth? And where did you break it? The bathroom. Why did you go in there? I wanted... I wanted to trick you. I have a test, and I didn't study for it. And now it's too late for school, hmm? Timbers. Simka Nolik, what you doing here? We're not Simka Nolik. We're courageous pirates. Yeah, pirates. And today we leave home for the sea. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Hooray! You mean no? No hooray? Oh, yeah. You can't join us without a test. Go and find a special thing. Something no sailor should ever sail the sea without. I can do it. But how? With a map. And it's over there. <laughs> I've never seen a map that's this puny. What are you talking about, puny? That took us a half hour to make. From where you're standing now. Uh-huh. From here, you mean. I guessed it right. First head to the north until you will find... Hold on. But where's the north? It's where the North Pole. Ice and polar bears are. But how do I know which direction the North Pole is? By compass, of course. A compass is a special tool that helps sailors and pilots know in which direction they're traveling, whether in the air or on the sea. Our planet is like a big magnet that has two poles. The North Pole and the South Pole. These magnetic poles help the needle in the compass find its way. The needle is magnetized, so one of its ends will be attracted to the North Magnetic Pole and point at it, while the other end will always point towards the South. That I know, but there's no compass around here. Then let's make one by ourselves. Out of what? We can use a needle. We just have to magnetize it. And how's it supposed to turn around? In a saucer of water. pointing in the direction of north and the other to the south. But which point's where? Well, there's the window, so that can't be the right way. The north is there. I'm really liking this sharp little fella we've got here. You calling me a little fella? No, it's just the way us pirates talk. All right then, north we go. First head to the north until you see a sleeping monster. Ladies ahoy, monster on the horizon. Let him do it himself. He, <laughs> hmm. Now turn to the left and go 300 paces more. 300? Exactly, I counted on myself. Uh-huh. Okay, then that means I'll go one, two, three. Now straight ahead until you get right up to the giant tree. <laughs> you call that a tree? 
Wow, amazing! I can't believe my eyes. It's a real ship compass. It's also called a marine compass. The first compass was invented more than a thousand years ago in ancient China. With its help, the Chinese were able to travel across the desert. And about 200 years later, the compass appeared in Europe. Whether the Europeans came up with the idea for the compass themselves or took it from the Chinese isn't clear. But one thing's for sure, we fixies remember how those early compasses were built. The first compasses were made with a magnetized needle on top of a floater inside a bowl of water. Later, the needle was put on top of a pin that let it spin freely, and it started to look like the ones we use today. Since the needle of a compass always points to the north, a sailor can easily figure out which direction he needs to turn his ship. If he wants to go north, he follows the needle north. If he wants to go south, he goes in the opposite direction. Your dad brought it home with him late last night from his work. You were asleep. Hold on. I want to check something. What's up? Yeah, they line up together. Of course they line up. If not, how else would you have gotten here? We're done with the needle. It has to go back. First head south, 600 paces. Six for you, matey. Case. Number one, let's begin. Well, well, I see evidence of the criminal. The criminal's fingerprints, to be exact. He won't get away with it. Why do you think she's just looking at us instead of chasing us? Oh, maybe she can't see us and we're invisible. Then how come I see you? Simka, Nolik, be careful. Don't destroy the tracks. What kind of tracks? Whose tracks are they? Shh, I have to solve a crime. A crime? What kind? Someone stole a wing from this plane, but I'm on the trail. Take a look at that fingerprint. I'm looking. Well, and so? Each fingerprint is unique, so if you can find fingerprints, that means you have a good chance to find out who left them. Class! It's been known for quite a long time that all humans have their own unique fingerprints. It's true! No two people have the exact same fingerprints, and this fact helps the police catch criminals. It starts by finding fingerprints at the scene of the crime. Then the police compare those fingerprints with the fingerprints of someone who may have committed the crime. If they match, they found the criminal. This method is called dataloscopy. Besides catching criminals, fingerprints can also be used to replace ordinary keys. When you press your finger against a special electronic lock, the lock recognizes your fingerprint, and then it's, please come on in. By the way, unlike humans, we fixies don't leave fingerprints anywhere. And that's why even the police can't find us. Now we'll put a dog on the scent of the criminal. Chusaka, sniff. Pick of the trail. Now go find. Hey, what's wrong? Chusaka's broken. We've got to fix her then. How? She's not a vacuum cleaner. She's a real live dog. Fixies know how to fix it all. Not true. Almost all. The first thing we have to do is a thorough inspection. Let's see now. Her eyes are looking quite healthy. Good. Tails in one piece. Ears are clean? Yeah. Tongue, rosy pink. Tom Thomas, stand her up on all four feet. No, paws, I mean. Uh-huh. Chusaka. <laughs> Go on, you're fine. Now I understand. Here's what's out of order. It's her right paw. But I can't see what's wrong. I wonder if something's broken on the inside. Wait. Maybe something really small is stuck in her paw there. Tom Thomas, we need your lens. Here. In order to examine a small object, you need a lens. A magnifying lens is a special piece of glass that is thicker in the middle than on the sides. It bends the light that passes through it. And that is why, if you put this kind of lens between your eyes and something small, it looks like the thing got bigger. If you put two lenses in a frame, you get a pair of glasses. 
And if you add a handle to the lens, you get a magnifying glass. There it is. A splinter. It's glass, I think. Looks like it. Uh, you're right. It's possible it's from the lamp in the hallway. It broke yesterday, and I guess not every little piece got swept up. Chusaka, hey there! You're all better now. Looks like we fixed her. Tanish, she's all repaired and working. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have cured an ungrateful dog. Simka, no, look, here it is. The wing that was lost. Yeah, that's great, only you still have to figure out who hid it underneath the bed there. Yeah, you still need to match the fingerprints. The fingerprints on the wing are the same as on the plane. But whose are they? And did you check your fingerprints out? Huh, all the fingerprints are mine. So I guess it was really my own fault. I just lost it somehow. <laughs> so it turns out that you were the criminal? Hooray! The crime's been solved! <laughs> <laughs> and you, Tom Thomas, are the criminal! <laughs> Where should I put it? Put what, Tom Thomas? Oh, it's you. Uh, my ice cream. Are you joking? Eat it! I can't. Tom Thomas, are you all right? <laughs> I'm fine. It's just that it's a present for my mom. Today is Mother's Day. Then you need to go give it to her. I can't. Dad and I are going to congratulate her together. What's your dad gonna give her? I don't know, but when he gets back home, the ice cream will have melted. Then put it in the freezer. And what if Mom looks in there and finds it? The surprise will be ruined. <sighs> so where won't she find it? I'll tell you where, inside of your dad's office. I don't see any place to hide it here. There's no freezer or anything. Why don't you take a look inside the box? Here's a thermos, but what good is it to me? Thermoses are for keeping things hot. The ice cream will melt in there. It will not. A thermos is made by putting one bottle inside of another. Between the bottles is an empty space, and that's the secret of a thermos. That space stops heat from getting out or in. So if there's hot tea inside, the empty space doesn't let the heat from the tea get out. And if there's ice cream in the thermos, the space stops the heat that's outside from getting in. And that's how a thermos keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. That's it. I'll go and play for a little while. He didn't even say thank you, did he, Nolik? Where are you, Nolik? I'm here! Where? In the thermos! What are you doing in there? I wanted to see that vacuum you talked about. Just don't touch anything. And don't even think of licking the foil. The ice cream's so cold, your tongue will stick to the metal. It's already stuck. What did you say? It's already stuck. Already stuck? Uh-huh. Try to unstick it. Well, is it working? Yeah! And what if you breathe onto the foil? <sighs> yeah! Hang on, Nolik. I'll go and get Tom Thomas. <sighs> Winter is a wonderful time of year. Holidays, presents, snowballs, skates, sleds. But the cold is also something serious that you shouldn't fool around with. The most important thing is to dress warmly. Cover your head with a hat and your throat with a scarf. Then there's less chance you'll catch a cold or get a sore throat. And to keep your hands from getting chapped, don't forget to wear gloves. And never walk around in wet shoes in the winter. 
that's a sure way to get yourself sick. And there's one more thing I want to tell you. It's great to have fun in the cold, but use your head. Don't eat snow or stick your tongue on metal fences, poles, or doorknobs. Your tongue can get stuck so strongly to the metal that it will be very hard to get off. I wish you all a glorious winter. Tom Thomas! Nolik's tongue got stuck! Where? In the thermos! Hurry! I'll explain everything later! Dad, you're already home? Mm-hmm. Dad, why are you taking my present? What do you mean, your present? I mean this one. Since when did it become yours? Oh, hi there. What's the fuss all about? Oh, it's nothing at all. I uh, have a huh? surprise for you. I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. A thermos? How wonderful. Thanks so much. <laughs> Is there something in here? I don't think so. <laughs> Inside, there's a present from me. Vanilla ice cream. My favorite. And how did that end up in there? <laughs> Thank you so much, my sweeties. Nolik, you got me so scared. Thank goodness you thought of turning into a screw inside of there. Uh-huh. Does your tongue hurt? Uh-huh. Do you think you can talk again? I can talk. Oh, that's good. We better hurry. We still need to go and wish our mother a happy Mother's Day. And you should, too. The spray can. Uh-huh. Footprints. Just like I suspected. Are those your footprints? Not, Not ours. ours. Then what's on your shoes? What a mess I got into. Pew! <laughs> it's bug spray! Elisa! <clears throat> what a terrible smell! What is it? It's poison. <clears throat> Why do we need poison? I've had this gnawing suspicion for quite a long time that something is living in our laboratory. And so, yesterday, after it got dark, I quietly dusted the table with flour. And so... Look, don't you see? Footprints. And I want to destroy <gasps> them. Destroy who? You really haven't figured it out? Cockroaches live here. A cockroach? That's what she <laughs> thinks you are. Eh, uh, what makes you sure that it's a cockroach? What else could it be? Well, uh, maybe a spider. Hmm. Well, spiders are cute. And nice, too. But then where is the spider where? Uh, uh, I don't know. Exactly. It's cockroaches. That stuff is gross. Where's that stuff coming from? It's from an aerosol spray can, Nolik. <laughs> Aerosol is made of tiny little drops and particles that can hang in the air for quite a long time. Dust, smoke, and fog, they are all aerosols. People learned to make aerosols long ago. For instance, they took a liquid that repels mosquitoes, poured it into a can, and injected some gas into it. Then, when you push the button, the gas forces the liquid to go out through a tiny hole, turning it into a bug spray. That spray will poison the Fixies. We have got to stop Elisa. Let's destroy the aerosol can. No way. We just can't do that. And what if we switch it with a can of whipped cream? Joking. We've got to get Elisa to believe that it's a spider and not cockroaches. She thinks spiders are cute. You're right. Let's go get Buggy. Spray cans have all sorts of different uses. For example, they're very convenient for getting medicine into a sore throat. 
They can be used to fill the air with the sweet smell of perfume or to cover unpleasant smells with deodorant. Spraying paint from a can is also very useful. It applies the paint very evenly. Some spray cans are even used for food. But there can also be deadly poisons inside of spray cans, like bug killer. So make sure you know which one you're using. And you must always remember how to handle spray cans properly so that nobody gets hurt. You must never open, take apart, or pierce a spray can. And spray cans should never be heated or put next to an open fire because they contain gas that can explode. Right? Would you help us? Please? <gasps> there are new tracks here. Well, roaches, prepare to die. Are you ready? Go ahead. Run! <gasps> oh, don't kill Buggy. No! <gasps> you are so cute! What a sweet little spider. Can I be your friend? That worked great. I hope that's the end of her spraying that poison. My little spider, I almost poisoned you. Spider, where are you going? Aren't we friends? Yeah, that's a good idea. You're better off being our friend. Buggy, wait! She's upset. She could have been poisoned and we didn't tell her. I'm sure she'll forgive us if we don't apologize. <laughs> hey, Tom Thomas, you're not allowed to drink water from the toilet. I'm not <laughs> drinking it. Then what? Washing up? In the toilet? Come on now. Then what are you saying? inside of there. Well, I think that the toilet's broken. The water just won't stop running. Yes, yeah, so? What do you mean, so? We gotta conserve water. Simka, you're the one that taught me that. You're right, Tom Thomas. It's important not to waste water. But the problem in this toilet isn't where you were looking. Then where? Here in the tank, not the bowl. <laughs> Almost all toilets have tanks that are used for storing water. This water is flushed into the bowl when needed. Water flows into the tank through a water valve that has a float attached to it. As the water level in the tank rises, so does the float. And when there's enough water in the tank, the float closes off the valve and the water stops. But if the float happens to break, the water will keep running through the overflow tube into the bowl. We'll be back soon. Look at this. I can't believe how beautiful it is. Ha! I see what's wrong here. This float that we're standing on, it got disconnected for some reason. That's why the water keeps pouring out. I see. And it's going down that tube into the bowl. Well, what's the problem? It's the float. It got disconnected. Can you get it back on? Nope. Sorry. Without Papoos, we can't fix it. We'll get Papoos. And you, Tom Thomas? You'll guard the door. Yeah, or someone could come and flush the toilet while we're working in the tank. And we'll get flushed away. To where? Straight into the sewer. And then it's bye-bye, Tom Thomas, forever. The sewage system is a huge network of pipes that run underground. This is where the dirty water from sinks and the waste from toilets is sent. The sewage pipes then carry this dirty water to sewage treatment plants, where the water is cleaned before it is dumped into a river or the sea. Before the first sewage systems were invented, people would just dump their waste right out their windows onto the streets. Oh, the smell in the cities was just awful. Even the first sewage systems didn't put a stop to this terrible smell. This smelly problem wasn't solved until the invention of the modern toilet. At the bottom of the toilet is a bent pipe called the siphon that's filled with water that keeps the smell from getting back into the house. 
Don't ask me why, but no one goes through that door. It's a secret, Chusaka. Tom Thomas, ready to eat? Not now, Mom. Not even a cookie? Mm. Mm. <laughs> All right. Here's what I need you to do. You guard the door so no one flushes the toilet. And that goes for you, too. Oh, it's terrible how much water's getting wasted. It's a good thing you noticed it. It was Tom Thomas who spotted it. <laughs> well, let's get to work. I wasn't planning on it. I was getting ready to take a shower. All right, just don't touch the toilet. What's wrong with it? It's just broken. Really? Let me check it out. Huh. No! Don't flush it! Flush it! Dad, why? <laughs> why are you crying? We fixed it. You're here! I thought that you got flushed down into the sewer! We almost did, but Nolik saved us, both me and Papa's. I'm Thomas. What was it that made you so sad? The toilet? Uh-huh. No need to be sad. The toilet's working just fine. Really? Yeah, I had to check it. <laughs> <laughs> now I need to go and check it too. 